What is going on, everyone? Trust the buzz here. This is the first podcast episode. Um, people have been telling me to do a podcast for a long time, so I was like, "Hey, why? Why this? This is the chance." If you don't know, I'm currently in the middle of a move, so just all my stuff is just packed everywhere. Um, I luckily just had my microphone out just because I use it for work. So it it just ended up working fine. Um, This is going to be just, if you're not familiar with me or anything that I do, like I said, this is Trust the Buzz. My real name is Darian. I don't know if I've ever said that, but anyway, my real name is Darian, but you know, I go by Trust the Buzz and uh, I just talk about the Charlotte Hornets, talk about NBA in general, but mostly the Charlotte Hornets, been a Charlotte Hornets fan for as long as I can remember, as painful as that sounds. Uh, and really, I just want to go ahead and record something I, like I usually have, you know, a camera set up and I'm usually has some edits in my videos. But like I said, I'm in the move. Things are packed up everywhere. I, there's just a lot going on. But I felt so bad about not having content for so long. So right now, for the next couple of weeks, it would just be easiest if I just did the podcast like this and then they kind of split it up and upload those videos to YouTube. So forgive me for kind of taking that approach, because I know some people may not like that approach, but Right now, it literally is what works best for me. Um, I really don't even know how to start this, but yeah, it's just that's what works best for me. And that's just a life update. Um, A lot has happened since my last video. I think my last video was before the trade deadline, actually. Um, But yeah, so if you're not familiar with anything that I do, just uh, I think you can check the podcast description or whatever and find a link to my YouTube channel. Go subscribe if you are not already. And for those of you who follow me from YouTube to here to whatever you're listening to, I'm trying to have this on everything. So I'm trying to have this on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, just anything where you listen to podcasts, you should be able to find this podcast there. Um, So forgive me, there's going to be some bumps in the road at the beginning because I've never done anything like this before. Um, so, well, at least not as professional, if that makes any sense. I had a podcast back in the day, but it literally was record on, uh, uh what is it called? I forgot what it's called. Edition or I don't know what it's called, but it's the, the free, uh, audio software. It was record on there and then it was just upload it. So I think we only did Apple. So yeah, so this is just going to be completely different, but anyway, enough of all that. I, I hate when podcasts take That was my computer. I hate when podcasts take forever um, to get started with the content. So I'll just save the more housekeeping stuff for later. Uh, Like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to have this as one long podcast and then chop it up and then upload the different videos on my YouTube channel. Because like I said, that's what works best for me right now. That's the best way I can assure you get content. Um, So like again, like again, I said, I'm sorry. I know that some people don't like that kind of form of content where it's just rehashing videos, but that's literally what works best for me. Um, So once again, sorry, but let's go ahead and talk some basketball, man. I've been waiting to talk basketball for so long. Um, So Let's go ahead and get into it. So the three things, eh, can we do four? Let's do four. Let's do the four things I want to talk about today is, and sorry if you hear my mouse click and I just have my notes and stuff, but the four things I want to talk about today are, will Steve Clifford be the coach next season? What should a Charlotte Hornets do next as far as their next moves um, and just their mindset going into the well, their mindset going into the offseason, uh, reviewing what they did at the trade deadline, and do we want Scoot or Victor? Now, I know it's easy to say Victor, but just to have some dialogue here because Scoot just had an amazing uh G League All Star game, um, and it was just you know flashy and just you know, and it just fits what the Charlotte Hornets do or trying to do, I guess, because they really haven't been able to see it through. But yeah, it, it, it's not really meant. It's more to meant be a conversation. It's for fun. You know, I know I think we would all rather have Vic, but possibility we don't get Vic. So, you know, let's just throw Scoot in there as well. So let's go ahead and talk about the easiest, which, like I said, will probably be uh, let's review the Charlotte Hornets deadline. I know I didn't say that first, but let's go ahead and do that. So the Charlotte Hornets um, during the deadline, let's go ahead and pull up what they did. All right. So. They in the Mason Plumley trade, they traded Mason Plumley for Reggie Jackson in a 2028 second round pick. Now it didn't make too much sense. I thought you could get a little more from Mason Plumley than Reggie Jackson in a 2028 second round pick. That second round pick is far away. I know Mason Plumley is on an expiring, but Mason Plumley has been really good. And I know any team that traded for him was trading for him as a backup center. It wasn't to be their starter. Um, so it, you have to think about that as far as the other team, how much just because Mason Plumley did so much on our team doesn't mean other teams value 
value him that way. And like I said, the Clippers were just looking for a decent backup, and they got that at Mason Plumlee. How much are you willing to give for a decent backup? Not that much. They didn't need Reggie Jackson considering they got Bones Highland. Now they got Russell Westbrook. Who else did they get? They got Eric Gordon. They, they have a stacked team, incredibly stacked team, which is something you need for, you know, Paul George hasn't been one of my favorite players, hasn't been, you know, the most uh, reliable as far as his injury. He's just been having a lot of injury. And Kawhi Leonard, definitely, you just never know. I think they're trying to build a team where if one of those guys go out, you still have a chance. That's how deep this team is. I think that's what they're trying to go for. They're trying to win by just having the bodies um, there. I think their playoff lineup is going to be huge. I think they're going to play everybody, you know, as much as they can. I don't think it's going to be, oh, we're going to cut it down to a six-man rotation. I think they're going to try to get anybody and everybody where they can. Uh, matchups are going to play a big part of it. It's just, it's just going to be very interesting to see what they do. Um, but, yeah, Mason Plumlee was just a backup to them. So I, I just still expected maybe a little more than a second-round pick, especially a 2028 second-round pick. But, hey, I mean, I don't know what the other offers were out there for. Normally we hear like, oh, the Charlotte, Charlotte Hornets were in talks for this and that and that. We didn't really hear that that much this season, at least for the Hornets. So I would say that, you know, it's just – it is what it is. I mean, I, I would like more, but I get it at the same time. Like I said, the Clippers were looking for a backup, and therefore you're not going to be willing to give up too much for a backup. I do feel like some more picks probably could have been added, even if it was just a bunch of seconds, because we saw five seconds get thrown around like it was nothing. Um, so maybe it was like three seconds, I would assume. But hey, I mean, it is what it is. If You have to also take in consideration what this means for the Hornets. So yeah, you didn't get that much value back, but think about the value you get. And I'm not like trying to defend the Hornets, but think about the value you get back as far as getting Mark Williams more minutes into start. Um, he hasn't looked super amazing as a starter, but he's looked really good. Um, so, I mean, that is that in itself is pretty invaluable, just having Mark Williams get those starter minutes. And then the team has been looking good, too. And I'm recording this on February 22nd. So anything I say here, any opinions I have could definitely change by the time y'all hear this. I don't know when I'm going to release this on YouTube or on the podcast platform. So just bear with me. I'll try to keep y'all updated through Twitter. Um, if you do not follow me on Twitter, it's at TrustBuzz. So T-R-U-Z-Z. B-U-Z-Z, and I'll try as my best to just keep y'all updated with everything there. And then also I use the YouTube community tab where, you know, you just make posts and stuff. And I try to keep y'all updated on there as well. All right. So next we have the Jalen McDaniels trade. So the 76ers received Jalen McDaniels. The Trailblazers received Matisse Stiebel and the Charlotte Hornets received V. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he didn't he go to Kansas. I believe he went to Kansas. He was a shooter. And in two second round picks. Now, Let's do. Let's say the Charlotte Hornets for last, and why they would do this trade, and we'll go from there. So, the why would the 76ers want Jalen McDaniels? Well, first of all, easily, it's kind of to replace Matisse Thybulle. While Jalen McDaniels may not be the defender Matisse Thybulle is, he definitely is a better. He is definitely a good defender with better offense. And I think you're willing to lose a little bit on the defensive side if it means that you have a guy that can spot up and score on the offensive side. I think that that's just the route they're taking. You also have Joel Embiid in the paint, which I know he's not in consideration for Defensive Player of the Year this year, but we know in years past, Joel Embiid can definitely defend the paint. So, it, I mean, they could just take the Rudy uh, Gobert approach when in Utah and just funnel everybody into the paint and then a Joel Embiid does what he does because there's not too many centers that's going to take advantage of him kind of just, uh, you know, getting off them and trying to protect the basket. I don't I don't think there's too many. I mean, you have Jokic and a couple of other guys, but it's just not too many, especially when we're, when we're talking about teams that are in the playoffs. It's just not too many. Um, so I think that's why they did that. Good trade for them. Um, I definitely will want more for Jalen McDaniel, but we can talk about that um, as we get to the Hornets. So for the Trailblazers, why would they want Matisse Stiebel? So, I, they knew they were trading Gary Payton in the second, I'm pretty sure, but at this point. And Matisse Thibel is someone that is a defender. They have enough scoring. They have Anthony Simons. They have uh, Cam Reddish, who all, who's a pretty decent defender as well. They have Damian Lillard. They got all these guys that can score, um, but they didn't have anybody that can really defend that perimeter. That's where Matisse Thibel comes in. You don't need him to score that much like you did when you like, – well, like – the 76ers did. Um, so you really just need him to defend the perimeter and go from there. And he can play next to anybody. He can play next to Dame. He can play next to uh, Anthony. So it really doesn't matter that much. 
Um, it's just a matter of just getting somebody the only perimeter that's available as opposed to Warriors who got Gary Payton a second and while Gary Payton a second has been injured it's not like they need him right away um, Steph's out and just these are a lot of different things going on with the Warriors but they're also the Warriors so despite everything they got going on you know that his team is geared up for the playoffs so I'm not really too concerned about them getting Gary Payton a second even though he's injured or anything like that but the Trailblazers a team that's trying to fight their way into the playoff picture you need available bodies Matisse Eibel's available I mean, he's an excellent defender, just not anything on offense, not yet. He's still very young. Now, we're getting to our team, the Charlotte Hornets. Like I said, they they got Svi, I don't guess how you pronounce his name, which is going to call him Big Svi, um, and two second-round picks. Now, this is like I said, I would like to think you would get a lot more for Jalen McDaniels, but I feel like the Charlotte Hornets, maybe I think they probably had a high price tag on them and then kind of panicked. Maybe, I don't know, didn't hear that anywhere, but this is the kind of trade that that's what it looks like. Uh, I truly believe that Mitch Kupchak is a better tr- trader, a better evaluator of talent than that to think, oh, this is what Jalen McDaniels is worth. So I think there were some other things that played into it. Now, like I said, I said he's a better evaluator of talent. That does not mean that he is just a, a trade mastermind or anything like that. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is that I believe that it was more than just uh, this is what he thought Jalen McDaniels was worth. I think it was just other things that happened. He might not just be a good negotiator. But with V, you get a shooter. You get a guy, a real shooter. And, I mean, I don't know if he stays on the team past this season. I don't I don't really think so. But you get something. You know what I mean? You get a veteran, a kind of veteran guy, older guy at least, and that can shoot. And on this team, I've said it for a long time now, this team has a lot of guys that can shoot but no shooters v is a shooter uh let's pull up his uh percentages uh v i don't know how to pronounce his last name and i'm sorry that you know you're not able to see this like i said in my videos you'll be able to see this but it is what it is and let's see so a career shooter he is a 30 what 36 percent three-point shooter which is pretty good um you expect him to be a little better than that um so far with the charlotte hornets he's a 33 but he had 12 points in that one game right before the all-star break so that was good um I mean, really, I think a lot of his like like let's okay like one of his better seasons when he was 22 in Detroit in 2019 2020 season he shot 40 percent from three taking five threes a game, uh, and then you go to oh well then after that he was kind of trash but like I said he's a better shooter than what we have 36 percent not bad at all and then also I feel like just with more chances I think he's gonna show us what he can really do. Um, it's like, for example, if you look up Kelly Oubre, and now, like I said, he's maybe not like league definition of shooter, but for team definition, definitely a shooter because there's not too many guys on his team that are shooting his percentage. Kelly Oubre shoots 30% from three. Uh, let's go to other guys on this team. Uh, what's the easiest way for me to do that from here? Uh, I forgot Kelly Oubre was drafted by the Hawks. That's something that is always funny to me. But anyway... We're going to the three-point shooting on the team. All right. So your best three-point shooter is LaMelo at roughly 37%. Um, Bryce McAllen is at 36%. PJ is at 35 And then Terry's at 33 Theo is at 33 And then Zvi now is at 33 But like I said, his career is 36 So at 36%, he would literally be the second best three-point shooter on the team is kind of my point and where I'm going with this. Or, I mean, maybe third. I, I guess if you want to count Bryce, but he doesn't get to shoot as much. He's only taken 33 um, three-point attempts this year. But no problem with that whatsoever. Like I said, V will be your third best shooter. Now, do you want that going into the next season? Probably not, but it just wouldn't hurt. It depends what the contract looks like. Um, you could see, I could see a place for him just deeper on the bench. He wouldn't get the minutes that he got, like that. I think he got 25 minutes that one game before the All Star break. I don't think he's getting that in the future, but what I'm saying is that you, you just have a guy that is able to shoot, and that's all I'm saying. I, I mean, I know there's better, they will probably be better out there in free agency, but for right now, for what we look at, for what we know, that's not bad to have a guy that can automatically come in and be your third best, probably second best three point shooter. Now, the thing I want to talk about really is the two seconds and trading Jalen McDaniels all together. So what's interesting about this is why would they trade Jalen McDaniels? Jalen McDaniels is a great young player. I think he's still developing. I know that he's like 26 or 25 and you would be easily be like, oh, that's kind of old. He's not going to develop anymore. This, that, and the other. But 
just to see the jump from last year to this year, some players just develop late. And I'm not saying like, oh, it's too late for him. But no, it's just some players develop later than others. And that seems like the case with Jalen McDaniels because the jump he made from last year to this year, to me, is astronomical. So I can only see him getting better. Now, is he going to make that kind of jump again? Probably not. But I do feel like he is going to make another jump. He is going to be a guy that a lot of teams are going to want. It's also very possible because he's a free agent after this year. The Charlotte Hornets could re-sign him back. I don't know. We've seen crazier things happen in the NBA. Don't think that's really going to happen and I'm about to tell you why I don't think that's going to happen but it is a possibility now like I said if you're if you're the Hornets it was kind of do you choose between Jalen or do you choose between PJ and some people are like why can't you keep both this is why you can't keep both because Miles Bridges is probably more than likely going to come back and play at the four Miles Bridges wouldn't make sense at the three even though he can play the three uh, but in the reality of it whether you like it or not whether I like it or not Miles Bridges will be back it's just that's what it seems like and if he does come back, when he does come back, he's going to play at the four. There's no sense of putting him at the three. To me, at least, just doesn't make too much sense. Um, also, some of that is considering who you have at the four. Having P.J. Miles, everybody, like P.J. Miles and then Mark at the center position. And this is just based on what we know, like uh, no draft, <laughs> you know, it put into this. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, that lineup, I know they did that lineup a little bit last year, especially with Gordon Hayward out. But in reality, I think P.J. probably comes off the bench. Depending on who you have at the three, I mean, you probably, I doubt they still start Gordon Hayward. At that point, Gordon Hayward did the last year of his deal. And so, therefore, you don't you shouldn't feel bad about putting a $30 million man on the bench. It is the last year of his deal. Um, you, w- I see why they wouldn't do it before the last year of his deal because it's just a bad look. As for, for the team, I don't care about Gordon Hayward. Um, but for the team, it looks bad to have a $30 million guy coming off the bench, even though he barely plays. So I just foresee Miles kind of playing at the four. I could be wrong. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work. All I'm saying is that the more than like scenarios that Miles Bridges plays at the four, a better fit next to um, Mark Williams um, in a way. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that's why they got rid of Jalen McDaniels, though, is because you would have a bunch of guys uh, kind of out of the log jam who all deserve minutes. Uh, in that position when you really don't want that you kind of just want your you really they're trying to find their starting lineup and you can't really do that considering you got you know Miles Bridges PJ Washington Jalen McDaniels and all that boned up down there so I get it why they would trade Jalen McDaniels I just think they should have got more maybe even maybe instead of two seconds of first but if you think about it they get their second back I believe even though I think they gave up a second if I'm not mistaken I probably didn't write that down but at the end of the day, they get their second back, which is important considering that their second round pick is going to be a basically a late, late first. Um, so I, I, I guess if you look at that, they did get the first in a way, but it's not the NFL draft where the you know in the second round, the first five picks seem like first round picks. So. It, it is what it is. Um, but, I mean, hey, this is a deep draft class. I know some people say there is a part. There are tiers. The tiers are, you know, drastic. Like, they, they definitely jump. You can see the big talent get in the tiers for the NBA draft class, this upcoming draft class. But there's still good talent all throughout the draft. So, I can see it. And maybe if that's what Mitch Kupchak is thinking. We never know what Mitch Kupchak is thinking. But trying to get in the benefit of him down here because, like I've said before, I'm tired of being negative. And that's really what I've been. And that does it for reviewing the Charlotte Hornets trade deadline. Let me know what you think. Um, I guess I go go to my YouTube video and leave a comment. Or um, I don't know. I was thinking about thinking of starting like a Discord where we can kind of talk about basketball and just y'all can give me, you know, insight on my on my podcast, on my YouTube videos, and we can all just chat it up in there and just, you know, maybe pitch me new ideas so I can provide better content for y'all. So maybe I'll do that in there. But then for the time being, I don't think you can comment on podcasts, or maybe you can. Uh, for the time being, go to my YouTube channel when I upload this and let me know what you think of the Charlotte Hornets trade deadline. If I had to give it a grade off the top of my head, I'll give it like a B minus maybe um, because you did get something back for Jalen McDaniels and Mason Plumley. I didn't like that. But like I said, you got to think about what it does for the team and what it does for the team is give Mark Williams more minutes who we've been hoping he would get more minutes. And it gives Nick Richards more minutes as well um, because I think that we need a backup center. And then Kai Jones as well, hopefully can get some minutes here and there, but we'll see about that. That's a little more out the way. Now we're going to talk about, uh, let's see, we should talk about what should the Charlotte Hornets do next? So I'll probably cut the video right there, but what should the Charlotte Hornets do next? I have no idea. 
I think if anything, what they should do is figure out what they're going to do with Dennis Smith Jr. I think that he's a very good backup. But Teo Maladon is another very good backup, younger backup. Um, I would say more skillful, but just not the defender. And right now we don't have that many defenders, so I wouldn't be surprised if they kept Dennis Smith Jr. Love Dennis Smith Jr., by the way. Um, But I think they need to figure out what they're going to do there. Um, His contract is up at the end of the season. Had to drink some water. But anyway, like I said, his contract's up at the end of the season. And I I, I see them bringing him back. I don't think there's anything in free agency that would stop them from bringing him back. There's nobody in free agency that could take that spot. I think he's a very good backup. You don't really need him to score. once. When you have a fully healthy team, I don't think you need Dennis Smith Jr. to score like you do now. So, with that being said, I think that he's probably the best bet for having a backup. That needs to be figured out. Uh, starting shooting guard, I, I mean, obviously, it's going to be Terry. I mean, I didn't even mention starting point guard, but we know LaMelo is going to be the point guard. Um, starting shooting guard has to be Terry, I guess, for now. I don't like that just because I don't like the fit of Terry and LaMelo, but it is what it is for now. And this is, like I said, this is no draft. Um, you know, being talked about. We'll have draft episodes, but right now we're just going to say we're going into the next season without thinking about a draft, at least. Um, so, yeah, Terry will probably be starting shooting guard, starting small forward. That's where it gets tough. Like I said, you could put Miles there and then put Pete. Like I said, Miles more than likely will come back, but you could put Miles there and then put PJ at the four. Or you can maybe still start Gordon Hayward at the three, Miles at the four. Uh, PJ PJ will be backup, and then Mark Williams will be the center, and then backups in general would be Dennis Smith Jr. It would probably be Bryce McCowens. I think he should get some minutes. It would be Kelly Oubre because I think if they didn't trade Kelly Oubre, I really feel like that means they're going to keep him uh, because I think after this season you would lose him for nothing. So there will be no reason to not trade Kelly Oubre if you don't plan on keeping him. Now, can Kelly Oubre price himself out of Charlotte? Very possible. But he said he wants to be there. They didn't trade him. I think that means they're really going to try to keep him. No problem with that. I just, um, it didn't make sense because I feel like it's hard reset for this team. But you add Miles, and then this is where we do talk about a draft, and then you add a really good draft prospect, you're back into trying to get into the playoffs easily. So, I get that mindset. It just, I don't see the vision right now, obviously, because we don't have Miles and we don't know who we're drafting. But if that's what you're, if that's your goal, then yeah, it definitely starts now with keeping Kelly Oubre and not trading him. So I 100% get it. Just, I don't see it. Um, so that will probably be the team. And then, like, if we do want to throw into the draft, I mean, there's nobody. I mean, maybe Scoot, and we'll talk about that later. Maybe Scoot could take that part because Scoot is a, uh, I'm trying to find a word for it. I would say Scoot's like an obnoxious defender. He's kind of like Dennis Smith Jr. He's just a pest. He's not going to be the guy to lock up everybody or anything like that, but he is a pest on defense, and we know a lot of players in the league do not like to be touched. They do not like to be just bothered when they're you know dribbling, and Scoot does that. He bothers you. He makes you uncomfortable. Like I said, he's not going to be the lockdown guy, but he's going to make – He's going to make sure that your shot is not easy. And I like that next to the mellow ball more than Terry. Not saying Terry doesn't deserve the start or Terry's bad at defending. Because if you look at the advanced stats, which I know some of you don't care, but if you look at the advanced stats, a lot of times Terry is put up against people he has no business garden in the first place. So is that really his fault? Don't think so. Um, but I don't think you just automatically get scoot and star him over Terry. I just don't feel like that's what the Charlotte Hornets will do. Do I think that's the right decision? Of course. But imagine, I mean, Terry could be a glorified six man. I I really think it would work. It it just depends on his personality, what the team's willing to do. Um, Also, it's just also, you know, Terry has a good, great personality from my understanding. But it's the fact that a rookie's coming in, starting over you. Eh. But either way, I think it would work. If Terry comes in, if Terry starts, he starts. But there's a high possibility that he he probably will start and Scoot comes in off the bench. Like I said, I don't think that's right. However, I think that's what the Charlotte Hornets do. Um, but if you're if you're Scoot, you're okay. You're like, oh well, we got this rookie. You're already playing him off the bench. I know people were saying that about Lamelo, but Scoot would be literally a glorified six man where he's basically a starter. Um, he'll basically play a lot of minutes. I don't think that it's going to be work his way in like uh, Mark Williams or anything like that. He literally comes in and starts. Now, and then you also have to think about if we got uh, Victor Wimanyama. 
All right. He's more of a, the more and more I watch him, and I feel like this is a consensus now. I don't even know if it's like a hot take or anything, but the more and more I watch him, the more and more, I mean, we can have the Scoot Victor conversation now, basically. But the more and more I watch him, the more and more I see he's a power forward, not really necessarily a center, even though he can rim, he can protect the rim. Oh, he's really good at it. He's, as of right now, he seems more of a power forward. So then this is where you go uh, Lamelo, Terry, Miles, Wimby, and then Mark Williams. Who's a better fit for the team, I guess, is what my question is. It's not a more who's a better player. It's more who's a better fit for the team. Now, Wimby is so good that he's always going to be a fit for any team. 100% get that. 100% respect that. 100% understand that. Um, but just for the sake of conversation, if I really had to pick, it would just be easier to get Scoot. Um, now, I'm, now, this is saying like, this is just super hypothetical because if you get the first round pick, you're taking Wimby. If you get the first overall pick, you're taking Wimby. And if you get the second, you're taking Scoot. It's just that simple. I'm not saying that if the Charlotte Hornets get one, they should get Wimby. I mean, they should get Scoot instead of Wimby. I'm not, and I'm not saying that. Well, actually, no, that wouldn't even happen. I was about to say if Wimby, well, yeah, if Wimby's available at two, I'm not saying like, oh, we didn't get Scoot, let's get somebody. No, I'm not saying that at all. If the Charlotte Hornets get first, they should take Wimby. If they get second, and I'm pretty sure Wimby will be taken. They should get Scoot. That's that's what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, just to create dialogue here, who would you rather have as far as a fit for the team? Not who you think is a better player, who you think will have a better career. Just as far as who fits the team better in terms of entering them into the roster and just having all the pieces connect, I think it's Scoot. Because with Wimby, you have to put him at power forward, then you put Miles at the three, then you put Mark Williams at the five. And then what does that look like? Uh, Wimby, I don't think he can really guard a perimeter like that. And we know that the four is more wing kind of base players anyway. None of them are really like into paint like that. Um, and then I guess maybe – now what I will say is teams have shooting bigs. Um, so like, for example, let's say the Celtics, for example, uh, they put in Al Horford. Al Horford likes to stand in the corner in the three. You put Wimby on him and then just have Mark rotate and kind of play the center. That could work. In a way, it just depends on the lineup because then you got to think Jason Tatum at the four. So then what do you really want to do? But I think you could put Mark on Al Horford. So it's just weird. It's just a weird thing because I do feel like Mark Williams can guard like the Brooke Lopez of the world, Al Horford's of the world. Um, I'm trying to think of other shooting bigs. I mean, Jokic don't shoot like that, um, but he can shoot. This is kind of what I'm thinking. So Jokic and Bede, you can put – I think you can get away with Mark Williams on them, but then it's like when you have the Jason Tatums – do you pull Wimby off or do you switch Mark onto Jason Tatum, who's playing at the four? That is kind of the conversation I'm trying to have. Um, what do you do in those situations? And I don't know. I mean, it's not like you really don't want to take any of them out, but, I mean, that might be what you have to do. So it's just that's where I think, like, Scoot kind of fits better because you can go you can go the middle, Scoot, whoever at three, Miles, Mark. It's just it's just a lot more clean cut, uh, not a lot more thought into it. Uh, so I think Wimby, I mean, I think Scoot is the better fit as far as just what we have right now. But once you when you have a player like Wimby, you make it work. And that's what I'm pretty sure the Hornets will do. But like I said, just to create dialogue. So let me know what you think about that because I feel like that's very interesting. It's just, it's so much easier to insert Scoot into the lineup than it is Wimby. Um, and it might be because I don't want to have Mark Williams lose his minutes. I love Mark Williams. I think he's a really good player. So it's like, do I want him to lose his minutes because Wimby? No, but it's just, it's just, I mean, that's the way of the game. That's how the game works. You know, you lose players that you really like, you know, or, you know, they don't play. Mark can come off the uh, bench and be an excellent center off the bench. Um, I mean, it's not like he's just so dominant that he has to start, especially if we get someone like Wimby. But then, like I said, Wimby still seems more of a power forward. Maybe I just need to see more of Wimby defending. So, like, if y'all have seen it, then let me know. Y'all can easily know, like, hey, Wimby's an excellent perimeter defender. He's able to, you know, track his guy from the from the three-point line all the way to the paint on drives. Um, he's good at switching, all that. That, I don't know. I've seen uh, I've seen offensive highlights. I watched a couple of games, and most time they obviously have him sitting in the paint. But I haven't been able to watch every game. I haven't been able to watch every workout. I haven't been able to watch every highlight. So, those of you who have or just even have seen the highlights and things I have not seen, y'all may know more to me. So, please let me know about that because that, that's just interesting to me. So, I personally think Scoop is the better fit. Like, it's just easy to insert him into the lineup. But... I understand completely that Wimby's the better player and you figure it out. And I mean, that's, that's probably what they'll do, especially if they get the first overall pick. 
All right, that was that was a lot, and I talked about two things there. I talked about what should the Charlotte Hornets do next, and I talked about what um, uh, Scoot or Wimby. So that was that was really fast. Now we are here, and we're going to talk about will Steve Clifford be the next coach? This is the final segment. Eventually, I had like fun little segments and stuff into the videos or into the podcast, but. You know, I have stuff to do. Uh, Like I said, it's just been hectic, to be honest with you, just moving and stuff. But um, will Steve Clifford be the coach next season? Easy answer, no. Not because he's not. uh, I wouldn't. I think I think Steve Clifford's a good mentality coach. I don't know if he's a good X's and O's coach. He's a good coach that you want to change the mentality of your locker room. Put in Steve Clifford. He's going to make these guys work hard. Do you want to draw up the best plays? And I mean, for those of you who watch football, when you watch the Super Bowl, the Eagles had an amazing defense. But the way Andy Reid was just able to draw those plays and get guys open, it just you can't like you can't mimic that. Like there's only a few people that can do that. You're not gonna have that with Steve Clifford. He's not gonna draw these up these amazing plays and things like that. But he is gonna you know teach guys hard work. He's gonna teach guys just. Just small basketball thing. I think he's he would be an excellent, excellent assistant. I think he really would. Like he's the guy to help you see things that you didn't really see. And it may not even be basketball related, or it may not be X's and O's related. It's just like he'll just make you realize things and just understand the game better. Like, hey, hold the ball up here. There's no need to attack the basket at this point in time in the game. Or rotate here because I noticed this guy's cutting down and they do this. And you know, I think he's perfect at that, which is still coaching. But head coach, as far as just everything encompassing the the, the you got to encompass you know the outside media you got to encompass you got to think about just player you know uh, player mentalities player you know personalities you got to do the X's and O's you got to talk to I already said it, I think but you got to talk to the media you just got to be aware of what's going around in the league as far as media and basketball that is where I don't. That's why I don't think he'll be a good head coach. I think he'll be an assistant head coach because really all you got to worry about is playing basketball. All you have to worry about is teaching basketball. I don't think he can do it all. And that's why I think they need another coach. Um, that, that's kind of like my point on that. But anyway, that was very quick. I mean, I, like I said, the short answer is no. I think he would be an excellent assistant. Now, who do I think should be the coach? I mean, you think – I mean, the Hawks just fired their coach. Uh, they just fired Nathan Millen, so – I mean, do you go Ime Adoka? I know that, you know, it's possible that he could go to Atlanta if he does coach. Because I think he's banned from the Celtics, but he's not banned from the NBA. Um, or suspended. Is that the right word? I think he's suspended from the Celtics, but not suspended from the NBA. So you got Ime Adoka. You got Kenny Atkinson. I mean, if you're the Hornets, you got Nate McMillan. I wouldn't want Nate McMillan, but I'm just saying. I'm just naming names out there. Uh, Mike D'Antoni, maybe they come back, spin the block, but Mike D'Antoni probably like, no. <laughs> or Mike D'Antoni, and I don't know Mike D'Antoni at all, but if he's like full of himself and he's like, oh, yeah, I see y'all come back, I'll take the job and, you know, show you why you should have got me the first time. I mean, yeah, I mean, that could possibly be it, but I know that there's a reason why they hired Steve Clifford again. Uh, so maybe Mike D'Antoni has no interest in coming back. Kenny Atkinson, I don't think the Hornets are doing that again the way Kenny Atkinson spurred them. I think I mentioned his name, but I was just thinking coach available coaches. I don't really know any more that I can think of. I mean, you got some coaches. I know I can't I don't know coaches' names like that, but you got a couple of coaches on Mike Bootenholder's Bootenholder's staff uh, that are very good. I mean, Darvin Ham was the excellent one, but the Lakers took him. But you got some coaches there. Um, I'm pretty sure you would probably want someone from uh, I mean, not the Warrior staff. I, I wouldn't think so. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think there's any other like marquee staffs, though. Are there? Let me know. Let me know if there's some staffs that's like, oh, they have some good coaches for the Charlotte Hornets. I don't. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Uh, like I said, I don't know coaches like that. I would love to get better at learning coaches' names, but as of right now, I'm not familiar with like every assistant head coach or every assistant coach or anything like that. Uh, I'm actually for. For some reason, I'm better at that at football, even though there's a lot more. But I'm better at that at football, knowing coaches and coordinators and stuff than I am at basketball. Um, but I guess maybe because it's more prevalent. Like in football, it's very like, oh, you got to know the OC and the DC and the, and the, and the running backs coach, quarterbacks coach, all, uh, pass game court. You got to know all these coaches. Um, but in basketball, it's really like the head coach and then maybe the top assistant. And then that's it. You don't really need to know anybody else. Um, and even then, it's not like the top assistant gets that much credit because like – 
in football when you watch it. Unless the head coach is like known for doing certain things, they're like, oh, that was a great call by inter offensive coordinator here. Or, they, oh, they stopped the team, you know, they stopped the whatever from converting on fourth down. That was a great co- a zone coverage call by inter defensive coordinator name here. So it's just maybe it's a little different. But anyway, I need to learn assistant coaches better. Uh, that's going to be a task I give myself. But anyway, let me know what you think of some coaches. That does it for the first episode of the Trust the Buzz podcast. I, 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 I'm still going to do my videos. I think I'm just going to do this as well to coincide with my videos. It'll be going to be different kind of content. I'm also going to start writing for the Hornets lead. So if you don't follow them on Twitter, go ahead and do that. I'll put that in the description down below. Um, thanks. Shout out to the guys at the lead uh, for just allowing me that opportunity to, I mean, to just grow my writing and they said, you know, they were cool. They were like, you can still do what you do. Just help us do what we do as well. So of course I took that opportunity. I also got something else coming up that I don't want to tell y'all about yet, just because I think the meeting for that is today, actually. So I'll probably give you an update on that and kind of see where I stand on that in the next episode. I'm thinking of doing like maybe one. Should I do one pod a week, two pods a week? I want to do one or two basketball pods a week and then have one pod where I'm kind of just talking about anything. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be necessarily like an kind of some people I like do the why they do like they used to do like an after show. I don't necessarily want to call it an after show because it's still going to be a base around my content. It's just going to be more me spitballing ideas and just different things I have going on with content based around content. Now, if you want to know more about like life and stuff, maybe I can add that in there, too. But I'm not I'm, I'm not really into that whole like. I know some people say like, oh, I was inspired or whatever. I'm not, to me, a lot of it's biting, especially like I literally just restaurant through the wire. I know a lot of people do like after shows or whatever, but that's just who I watch a lot that does it or used to do it. So I don't know. Uh, just let me know. But I do want to do where I can kind of talk to y'all about just content and just what I want to do and just maybe get some ideas off you network with some of y'all because I'm trying to get more into graphic design and just more into video and audio and make sure all things are crisp and correct and things like that. And it's just difficult to do all that. So maybe just talking to y'all about that would help. And then maybe let me know also if I should do the Discord, because I really would like to do the Discord. I got to find a way to chop up this audio um, and get it ready for the YouTube videos. I think, and like I said, let me know if y'all don't like it in the comment section, like when y'all go to my YouTube video. But I think I'm going to upload the podcast on there as well as just one audio. And then I'm also going to cut it up. And so you can see the different sections as well, all those different videos. But then also, once I get settled, I'm still going to do the videos where I'm on camera and I'm showing y'all stats and we're doing things like that as well. So I just have a lot of content planned. I literally just got to get settled. One of the most difficult things I've done in my life so far is selling one house, buying another one, making sure the other house is settled while still living in the new house and trying to make sure, you, you know, it feels homey. doesn't want to, you know, you don't want to move into a new house and make it feel like, oh, I basically didn't go anywhere um, or made an upgrade or anything like that. So it's just a lot going on. So please, please forgive me because I I, I'm, man, I can't tell you. Like I've been telling my wife, like I'm sick. Like that's how bad I want to make content and just, you know, talk more hoops with y'all. But it's just been almost impossible to find the time uh, just with so much going on. But hopefully that will be over soon and I can just do more videos. I don't know when the next time I'll do like a video where you see my face, but I hopefully can do a lot more of these um, in the future. And just a lot of these are going to be coming out um, until I can get finally set up. Because right now my room is pretty much empty. I mean, I got a couple books I literally just bought. I'm getting into like reading a lot more now. I used to just kind of read here and there. Um, and then I got like a book bag full of camera gear without the camera. Stupid of me. And then I have like a box with my PlayStation in it. And then I have like my router and stuff in here. And I think that's it. And then like my work stuff. So it's just, it's just, there's nothing in here. There's nothing in here. There's no setup and just things like that. So like I said, just bear with me with the content. I actually kind of like this podcast thing. I can kind of ramble and not feel bad, but anyway, I am done rambling. Uh, thank y'all so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, like I said, I'm recording this on 22nd of February. So hopefully I can get this out maybe Thursday. Maybe that'd be my release day. I don't know. We'll figure out schedules later. Now I'm just going to, if anything, I'm just make sure I upload weekly maybe twice a week, but I have no idea about 
like days. Like you're just gonna get them when you get them. But if anything, you can almost guarantee that I will have two episodes for you. So anyway, once again, maybe not this week though, because I started so late. Because today's already Wednesday. We'll see. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, and I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>